Throughout this war, Israel has said that its goal in Gaza is to destroy Hamas. But Israeli attacks on Palestinians have also escalated on the West Bank, where Hamas has no authority or military presence. That violence is usually provoked by Israeli settlers. Prior to October 7th, almost 200 Palestinians had been killed on the West Bank in the past 10 months. That number has more than doubled since. Mariam Barghouti is a Palestinian journalist based in Ramallah. She's been interviewed by multiple media outlets about what's happening on the West Bank and in the war on Gaza. And some of those exchanges, like this one with the UK channel Sky News, have been tested. Dozens of Palestinians are killed. We call it a slaughter. We have called it a massacre this time because it... Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about individuals. But could you just answer? I'm just interested. Mariam, yeah. If you would like sure. to talk to me as I'm a journalist, about indiv- at least come with me with the right information, please. Mariam Barghouti joins us now from Ramallah. Ms. Barghouti, that exchange that we just saw on Sky News, in the interviews that you've done and the ones that you've seen on this topic since October 7th, how typical was that exchange, that moment? The way international journalists attempt to trope Palestinians and delegitimize, as well as deny the crimes against them, has has not only become vicious in, in the way that journalists are framing it, like that interview, but it has increased and become lethal in a way that it is a complete pro-genocidal stance by journalists that claim to be um, objective, that claim to be nonpartisan, that claim to be supporting um, the truth to support accurate accuracy for their audiences. But it's not just common. It is being encouraged by editors and policymakers, whether directly or indirectly. So you don't see that as someone not fully understanding the context and bringing the context to the interview. You see that more as an intention. Absolutely. As journalists, it is our job to do our due diligence prior to bringing in anyone who is giving a testimony. Um, So to claim ignorance requires you to quit your job and go and learn. Let's talk about the West Bank, where you live. It's always been heavily surveilled. Hebron is often described as Exhibit A in the modeling for automated Israeli apartheid. What have you seen in the way of surveillance and any escalation on the West Bank since October 7th? Of course, we have seen an escalation of surveillance across the West Bank, as well as for Palestinians with Israeli citizenship, which we tend to negate from the narrative um, of the ethnic cleansing happening. But the surveillance within uh, the West Bank is not just invasive. It is at levels of being lethal. First, you collect the data. You insert cameras on every single street where you have five cameras on every corner, keeping track of Palestinians. You gather car plate numbers in a big database of every single Palestinian driving which car um, to know the movement. As we have seen, many of the assassinations being carried out by the Israeli military are happening in people's cars. What we are seeing now is just an, an escalation, intensification and an emboldenment to carry out step number two of Israel's surveillance operation, and that is kill who we find. And this is all under the claim of having information for Palestinian terror activities, when in fact it's just Israel trying to cripple Palestinian will, to cripple Palestinian morale, in that it foregoes um, the claim to liberation, the demands to be free, and the end of the Israeli occupation. Since October 7th, uh, journalists from around the world have flown into the, into the region. A lot of them are still based in Israel. Some of them have embedded with the Israeli military to get into Gaza. How difficult is it for journalists to get into the West Bank? And for those who haven't been to the West Bank to cover the story, what are they missing? It's relatively difficult for journalists to enter the West Bank only in comparison to previous times. But Israel is placing restrictions and is assigning things like minders to different bureau chiefs and international reporters in the region. And that is someone that responds and operates under the command of the Israeli military to attempt and coerce, manipulate, um, as well as pressure journalists to cover in a certain angle or to deny information from audiences. But 
Nonetheless, journalists still have the capacity to challenge this and come into the West Bank. The persons that they are bringing on to speak on the situation are the very people that are committing the crimes against Palestinians, that is Israeli military spokespersons, um, that is Israeli policymakers and settlers. And at the same time, negating the Palestinian testimony. And if they do speak with Palestinians, it is always an attempt to frame a two-sidedism. But there is no two sides to this, not just because it's a false equivalence between colonizer and colonized, but because journalists are only showing one side, and that is the Israeli side. And unfortunately, what we have seen more than that is a negation and a denial of the information and news that local journalists have, as though that is inferior rather than recognizing that local journalists are the experts on this situation, even though their lives are at increased risk um, from Israeli repression, as we have seen in their targeting in Gaza. So these layers contribute to the misinformation. These layers contribute to allowing global complicity persist and sustain um, what we are seeing in Palestine. Many Western and international media outlets simply brand this as a war between Israel and Hamas. How accurate is that framing, given everything that we've been hearing from Israeli officials on the record targeting civilians in Gaza? How accurate is the framing? How dangerous is it? It is so dangerous to take what is happening to Palestinians and reduce it to the title of an Hamas-Israel war. This is not a war between Hamas and Israel. This is a war against Palestinians. So to frame it as that is a reductionist approach, and it is an attempt to continue the illustration of Palestinians as terrorists because of the, the association that was made of what Hamas is. We see the Israeli military, they closed down a printing shop downtown Ramallah just this morning, and the flyer on the door that they plastered was Hamas equals ISIS. So it goes to show you how manipulative that narrative is. And then there is no mention of Gaza being besieged for close to two decades. There is no mention of the same thing happening in Gaza right now has happened before at a smaller scale because what we have seen is transcending all trends of violence that we Palestinians have witnessed or we have witnessed in the region since 1948. So to claim that it is a Hamas and Israel war is either an inability to actually do the due diligence and look into the context and explain that to your audience, or it is intentional. And that means you are being complicit in genocide. One last question for you. We've seen some amazing journalism coming out of Gaza, Palestinians, too many of whom have paid with their lives, uh, making a name for themselves getting the recognition that they deserve. Can you give us a few names of some good follows of Palestinian journalists on the West Bank, people whose work is worthy of our following? You okay? Um, Do you need another moment? Take your time. Yeah, just one sec. Take your time. It's so difficult to speak about journalists here. Tell me um, about it. Considering just the targeting. Yeah. It's heartache. And, and as a reporter, you know, we, I think we forget that these are our peers. And it also, you know, we're not advocating just for the protection of journalists, but as reporters and journalists, we're advocating for ourselves um, to, to remain safe. But in terms of coverage, I think there are multiple reporters and news organizations that are actually going against the grain and going against the restrictions that are being imposed by editorial policies abroad, at least. Al Jazeera has been doing incredible coverage um, of what's been happening all across Palestine, not just Gaza and the West Bank, but in its entire context, we there are organizations such as Mondewice, which has also been reporting excellent um, in print uh, on the West Bank. We have Middle East Eye that has also been showcasing excellent reporting on the West Bank, as well as highlighting and covering the disinformation and mistranslation that has been happening within international media organizations. But, I mean, in, in terms of individuals, you can see the works of people like Fathan Alwan, 
Uh, you can see the works of Muhammad al-Kurd, although he is not here, but he is able to amplify a lot of the coverage that is being sent from local journalists abroad. But yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have maybe two specific names. That's fine. That's fine. Mariam Barghouti, thank you for joining us today here at The Listening Post. Thank you for having me.